Yeah, I just I just got on. Check one, check two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Getting ready for the presser. This is uh, Pitt and Mississippi State. Is, uh, why can't I find where Pitt's playing? Play three ten on Friday. Uh -huh. All right, who we got? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, four. Uh, Greg, Jamarius, and Guillermo. We got four people. He will not. Yes, I'm 
to it and I I'm, I'm very sorry but Tom they'll, they'll be open for 30 minutes to my knowledge they'll be open for 30 minutes oh, okay. Just a just a reminder for our media members, uh, if you could please silence your phones, greatly appreciate that. Also, uh, in in regards to questions, just please state your name, media affiliation, and uh, those that'll be joining on Zoom, uh, use that hand icon, and uh, you'll be able to ask your question to our student athletes or coach. You know, we are recording the press conference, and uh, uh, we ask that you uh, that you keep your cell phones in your pocket. Again, uh, no cell phones or cameras in regards to recording. That is prohibited. Thank you. Congratulations to the Pitt Panthers winners tonight, 60-59, uh, a game that saw 21 lead changes. And Pitt now advances into the next round. They'll take on Iowa State on Friday at 310 in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, joining us, uh, Nellie Cummings, who led the Panthers with 15 points. Greg Elliott had 13 points. Uh, Jamarius Burton, only six points, but a huge basket that would be the game winner. And Guillermo Diaz-Graham joining us up on the stage with a titanic block as Jeff Capel and his Pitt Panthers now move to 23-11. and 11. Uh, Coach, before we get to questions, uh, what this means in this win – and the fight from your, your team here tonight? Well, first and foremost, what a great college basketball game in an amazing atmosphere. Uh, I want to give a big time thank you to the fans here in Dayton. Um, you, you can see why they love, you can see that they love basketball. And really want to give a huge shout out to our fans that made the trek here uh, to Dayton. We, we, we felt them, um, they gave us energy when we were a little bit tired. And uh, I thought they willed that shot, those two last two shots for Mississippi, for Mississippi State not to go in. Um, really proud of my team. Uh, we showed toughness, resiliency. We, we've, we were who we've been all year. And uh, it wasn't pretty, but it was beautiful. And we just feel so grateful, so thankful, and so excited to be able to advance and get to Greensboro. We now open up the floor for questions. Uh, we'll start with questions for our student athletes. And we will begin front row on the aisle. Jamarius, walk us through what was going through your mind ahead of that game winning shot. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to thank God. You know, um, it was a tough game. Um, these guys were continuing to fight um, when I had the ball in my hands um, with the last 30 seconds or so. I just told myself I was built for it. And um, I just got to a spot and let it go. And I had complete confidence in myself. And that was pretty much everything that went down. First row on the far side. 
George Michalowski, Pittsburgh Sports Now. Guillermo, what was it like tonight battling in the paint with Tolu Smith? You know, how did that go down for you? How are you feeling right now physically? Man, I'm exhausted. Uh, that was that was a hell of a fight. Uh, he's a really good player, and he was trying to tag me in every time. Of course, because he's bigger than me, but um, just just fighting. Just he's bigger than me, but I'm gonna fight more than you, and it's, it's exhausting. But um, we got to win, so it, it was worth it. The front row. Corey Chris at DK Pittsburgh Sports. Guillermo, with Federico's knee injury, when did you find out you would be getting the start? And just walk us through that process of getting ready for a matchup like this, knowing that you would be without a key guy like Federico. Um, yeah, I knew it um, when we were on shoot around because I was in the starting five. And um, just, you're always ready. Um, you always got to be ready to step in and help the team. And hopefully for next game, Fred can be back. So we did it for him so he can experience the, this thing too because he was part of this the whole year. Now he, he couldn't play the first game, but I'm sure he's going to be for the next one. Se second row. Jenna Harner, WPXI. Nelly, coming into the game, you said that on a national stage, you guys wanted to go out there and show you're a tough team, a together team, an experienced team who's going to battle through whatever adversity you guys face. How good did it feel to demonstrate that on a national stage tonight? Uh, it definitely felt good. I mean, we've been doing it all year long, so it was just a, a testament to our work all year, and I think everything came together today for us, for sure. First row on the aisle. Uh, Chris Carter, Post-Gazette. Guillermo, what, what was your feeling when you got that block in, in the final seconds there? I saw you, like, roar towards the crowd. What was that moment like? Just all the energy coming out of my body. Um, I did that block, I don't even know how with my left hand. I usually don't use my left hand. Um, and I block it and I know it was a big play, so I just just let that energy go out. It's not that good because I, I got a lock in back to the, to the two seconds left, but I just couldn't contain it inside me, so. The third row on the aisle. Yeah, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN. Guillermo, you had that big hug with your brother after the game. What, 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 what's kind of going through your mind and what, what's that moment like for you and for him? That's just, um, after this, the the shot clock sound, and and he come to me and he ha hug me, all the all the emotions that I've been feeling during the game, and I can, I, I gotta keep my my face straight. Uh, all the emotions at the end when when I hug him, they just come out, and he's he's a great feeling. Um, so, yeah. First, first row, Jeff with Jamarius in foul trouble. You know you. Uh, I'm sorry. Can we the, just the student athletes right now? Oh, I'm, I'm apologies, JB. I'll go to you then. You know. With the foul trouble you had in the second half there, you spent a lot of time on the bench there. Just how did you kind of mentally recollect yourself knowing that you'd have a moment to go back in and to produce in those final minutes? Yeah, I mean, for me, I was just talking to God most of the time, being engaged, um, you know, with my teammates, encouraging them the whole time, and just understanding that I'll have a moment and I'll have a chance of getting back out there and making an impact for the team. Second row. This is for all three of you guys, but you're – part of the first pit team to win a tournament game since 2014. Just how does it feel to kind of cement yourself in that way? How does it feel to get this win? Uh, I think it feels good. We're definitely excited about that. We're going to enjoy that today, but our work doesn't stop here. So we're a hungry team who's who's ready for whatever challenge is in front of us. I second that. Yeah, um, I think the people of Pittsburgh deserve this. Uh, they, they, they're really great. They come all the way here to support us, and I feel like they deserve this feeling again. First row on the aisle. Uh, Chris Carter, Post-Gazette, Jamarius and Nelly, you guys were 8 of 13 in the first half from three, and then you only took six from three in the second half. What were they doing to try to push you guys off the three-point line, and how much did you guys talk about needing to switch up your game to adjust to that? Uh, I think they, they kind of stayed with shooters a little more. I mean, every team's going to make adjustments at halftime, so I think we had to kind of make the same adjustments and realize what type, of, what type of game we were in and just really take what the defense is giving us. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, we got some lethal shooters on our team and the attention that they bring. I remember at one point at a time, um, you know, when Blake was setting the screens, they didn't want to switch. They wanted to stay stay with him, you know, and sometimes we exploit that mismatch with him at the four and setting those screens because you either got to stop the ball or stop him. And, you know, they, they did a good job, you know, taking him away, but um, he made a big one down the stretch for us and we just continued to take what the defense gave us. Other questions for our student athletes? Third row. Yeah, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN. Nelly, I think it was a one possession game for like 26 minutes in a row. What, what's it like to be in that 
for such a long stretch where no one can really pull away? Uh, it's a dog fight. I mean, coming into this game, we were pre prepared for that. But like when you're in the dog fight, it's just a lot of adrenaline, a lot of emotion, a lot of attention to detail. And I think today we, we did a really good job of that, staying focused on our task and understanding the assignment. First row. Uh, and this this is for all of you guys. What was the message about the rebounding after halftime? They dominated the offensive glass and the overall rebounds. Then you guys, they still won the rebounding battle, but you guys mitigated it to a point where it, you guys were able to keep fighting back with it. What was the talk coming out of the locker room? Nelly, you want to start? Yeah. Uh, without Federico, we knew we had a challenge ahead of us regardless. So I think all of us kind of rallied around that and really just gave it our all. We wanted to everybody crash the glass. We call it gang rebounding. So we all wanted to attack it, and everybody tried to get a rebound just to lighten the load on G. Jamarius? Yeah, and, um, you know, just going into the game, we understood, um, you know, that they were a good rebounding team. We understood that, number one, got about four offensive rebounds a game, so we knew that was a point of emphasis going in. And um, they was dominating the, the boards, like you said, in the first half. But like Nelly said, um, if we really want to win, we got to gang rebound and get the stops necessary. Guillermo? I second that. Any any more questions for our student athletes? Um, this is also for the for the team. Uh, it seemed like there was a consistent plan. Whenever uh, whenever they tried to feed to someone against Guillermo down low, you guys were coming to help, and you had a plan of attack. You only had a couple days to even talk about this plan, and then also you know, not knowing Fetty wouldn't play until late. What went into the preparation to execute that plan and keep executing it for 40 minutes? Yeah, I mean, I would just say it, it was the scouting report. You know, coach did a great job, you know, um, putting us in positions, knowing when they were going to be feeding the ball off of, you know, their plays and their execution. And then for us, we just wanted to be there for our brother. We understood that type of battle that he was going to be in, you know, uh, all conference time all-conference type of guy, you know, um, that he was going to be going against. So we just wanted to have his back out there. And just on top of that, I think the attention to detail we had to have to, to maintain that throughout the game was something that we talked about uh, as soon as we found out who we were playing. As soon as we seen the matchup, we knew that we would have to be locked in defensively. So being that uh, Federico wasn't playing, we just understood the assignment and really just followed it. Yeah, like we, we knew that they were going to come at me. And I just had my team behind me to help me. Uh, because yeah, I was at a disadvantage, but they, they helped me. Guillermo, Nelly, Jamarius, a fantastic fight. Congratulations. Uh, best of luck on Friday. And uh, safe travels to Greensboro. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs> See you all there. I will now uh, open up the floor for, for Coach as um, the Pitt Panthers will be meeting Iowa State on Friday at 310. Fir first row aisle. Jeff, I know you said you're proud of your guys, but you challenged them on defense and, and detail. Just what's your overall feeling as a coach who's mentored these guys all season long with the defensive effort that they gave this game? Just really proud of them. I mean, they fought. They were tonight who they've been all season long. Tough, resilient, unbelievably together. I mean, for Guillermo as, as a freshman to start in the NCAA tournament and play 37 minutes, against an all-conference player that's a graduate, that's a grown man, and to stand up to him and to fight throughout and then to make that block at the end, for Jamarius to be sitting for as long as he sat and then to want the ball in that moment and to be able to deliver. Uh, for our team to be able to defend this team and hold them under 40% shooting, I thought one of the main stats is that we defended really well without fouling. They only shot seven free throws. And uh, I think Smith had been averaging about seven free throws a game himself. And so for us to be able to do that and to be able to grind out a game like this, I'm just, I'm, I'm really proud of everyone. Th third row on the aisle. Jeff, Matt Digby from ABC 22, Fox 45 here in Dayton. You said uh, you were thankful for the chance to come here to Dayton and you definitely had the, a lot of fan support it looked like. For you guys being just a few hours away from home, did, will you say that played an uh, uh, aspect in that, considering you know a lot of teams the next couple of days will be flying across the country to come here? Yeah, well, I think certainly, you know, having our crowd there, man, I mean, when they did the starting lineups, you heard them, you know, you felt it, and throughout the game, you heard the let's go pit chance, and then at the end, when we blocked that shot in those last 2.7 seconds, I mean, I thought their energy – Help that ball not go in, the three in the corner and then the tip in. Let's go to the first row. Jeff, I saw the moment you had there with Guillermo before he walked off the podium. I mean, 
I know how much you and your staff love him and his brother and how far they've come this season in their development. Just what does that say about the collectiveness and the togetherness of this team and how they represent it? Yeah, well, I love all of them. I, but specifically, as you asked about those two, one of the coolest things for me for this game, you know, besides winning, um, was how his teammates were with him throughout the game. There were times when, you know, he wanted to put his head down that he didn't feel good about maybe, you know, an assignment or missing a shot. And those guys kept telling him, like, don't do that. We got your back. We're with you. And that's it, – it, it's who they've been all year. And um, – I'm just, again, I mean, for a freshman, <laughs> you know, to step up on this stage and to play, you know, like he did, five rebounds, two blocks, you know, his ball screen defense at the end, you know, for the last, I'd say about eight minutes, we we tried to trap every ball screen with the five. And for him to be able to do that and get back in there and to fight and to battle, I, I mean, this is the most minutes he's played all year. And um, just just really, really happy for him. Again, in regards to the transcript, if you could say your name, your affiliation for the question, that'd be great. Second row. Jenna Harner, WPXI. Jeff, that buzzer sounds. You guys win. How do you describe the emotions? Happy, excited, relieved, um, exhausted, but full of energy, uh, and just really happy to see our guys in that moment, like to, to see them to see how they reacted to it, to see how excited they were and how proud they were, you know, of our fight and being together and figuring it out. A couple of questions here left uh, for Coach. We'll, we'll go to the far side. Jeff, Mike Lopresti, NCAA.com. You mentioned that tonight they, who they were who they've been all year. The journey of this team, when you look at it, from where you guys started in the season and, and maybe some people not thinking, you know, what you were going to do, you went through tough times, you went through great times, and the fact that that translates into a night like this, how, as a coach, how fulfilling is it to look at the journey this team's been on? I am so proud of, you know, to be on this journey with them. I'm really proud of the journey they've taken us on. When I say us, our coaching staff, because it's been really unbelievable when you think about it from the beginning. Um, when we were down in Miami getting, you know, playing for the ACC championship, the night before my staff and I were just sitting around and we just started talking about everything, just everything, the first four years, everything that we had been through. And then we started talking about everything that happened at the beginning of this year. And just unbelievably proud and grateful to be a part of them to be a part of their journey, to, to have some sort of impact, to, to watch how they've come together and how they stuck together, how they have persevered, to watch the joy they bring every day, to watch how they've been able to move on to the next play, you know, after a big win or a tough loss. It's, 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 it's been pretty unbelievable. All right, two questions here. Uh, let's go to the, to the front row on the aisle. Chris Carter, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Jeff, we've talked about how resilient your team's been and how they've been able to, you know, take counter punches and adjust in game when you guys can't practice as, you know, as hard as you want because of the limited players. They did it again today with, I talked to them before about the, you know, the three-pointers shooting a bunch in the first half and then shooting, you know, only six in the second half. What goes into their mindset to be able to just keep playing and keep sticking, and keep finding different ways to win all season long? Yeah, I just think it's a group of fighters. It's, it's a group that really believes in themselves, really believes in each other. You know, we've said the strength of our team is the team. We've said that from the beginning. And tonight was another example of that. Guys stepped up and made big plays um, throughout. I mean, some of those finishes that Nelly made. You know, Blake taking that, what the heck are you doing, three. That, you know, that, that, but that's who he is. And I've said, like, I got to live with that. Like, I'm yelling at him when he shoots it, and he looks at me like, you know, or whatever. And so, again, I understand that. I understand my group. And uh, I'm, I'm just unbelievably proud, man, to be on this journey with him. And I, do, I, I don't want it to end. Last question, first row. 
Jeff, Corey, Chris at DK Pittsburgh Sports. How close was Federico to going today, and how much was he able to test out his knee before you guys shut it down? Yeah, he wasn't close. Um, we knew yesterday he wasn't playing. Um, that was I shouldn't say we knew. We knew it was going to be a long shot. And when we went to shoot around today, he tested it again just one more time. But in my mind, I had the feeling when I watched him try it yesterday that it, it was just too soon. If it was, If we would have played later in the week, Thursday or Friday, maybe there was a chance he could have been ready for that. Um, there's a chance he could be ready for Friday. We're very, very hopeful. Um, but once we got to this morning shoot around, I knew right then that there, you know, he wasn't going to be able to go. Coach of the year in the ACC in advancing to Friday, uh, the head coach of the Pitt Panthers, Jeff Capel. Thank you so much. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's all four. Okay. At this time, we, uh, we welcome the Mississippi State Bulldogs out of the uh, SEC as they finish the season 21 and 13. Uh, joining us, uh, DJ Jeffries, Tolu Smith, uh, Shaquille Moore, and Deshaun Davis with their head coach, Chris Jansen, Chris Jans, excuse me. Coach Jans, uh, if you could just talk about the fight of your team tonight and in the season that your squad had. Yeah, there was no doubt in our minds that we would fight and scratch and claw, and um, we did. I think it was, I don't know, 58, 52, if I'm not mistaken, and we ended up taking the lead, and they took it right back, and then obviously we had – couple chances there in the end to, to win the game, but um, it didn't happen. Well, we will open up the floor for questions for our student athletes first. Uh, in the first row, go ahead. What you saw on that last play, kind of what your initial reads were, and then you know what, when you found Shaq in the corner? Um, really, I just seen Shaq was open, so I just passed him the ball. It was really simple. As Coach had mentioned there, I mean, everyone's talked about your fight all season. You know, you guys go down six there late. What did this group kind of show one more time to kind of make that seven a run and put yourself right back in a spot where, you know, after that three, it looked like it would have been the dagger? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of this team. I'm very proud of this team. Uh, we fought, scratched, and clawed. We've been through a lot of situations like this. And, uh, yeah, I'm just so proud of the team and happy to be able to be uh, 
a part of this uh, season with these guys. For sure. Gracie Barra, WCBI, when you talk about being in this situation, you know this feeling, how important is it to, I guess, lift each other up and especially lift Shaq up after that shot? Uh, yeah, it's it's a big thing for us. Uh, team and, and loving each other is uh, something that we, we bank on. And, you know, Shaq's shot wasn't the, the reason why we lost. It was uh, other things that contributed to the loss. And we had a great look at the end of the game and, just sometimes the cards don't fall in your favor. But um, I'm so proud of this group. Like I said, I'm so proud of everybody. I'm proud of the coaching staff. And um, yeah. For Shaq and DJ, you both talked, you know, throughout the whole season how how badly you wanted to get back to March Madness. And you know, I know it's things right now, but you guys had that opportunity. I guess what did it mean to kind of, you know, grind through everything, the, the highs and lows of this season and have the opportunity to come here and experience this? <coughs> Um, like Tolu said, you know, we, we've been through a lot of adversity, you know, and I couldn't be more proud, proud of these guys. You know, we built a brotherhood that's going to forever be a brotherhood. And, you know, tonight we came up short. And, you know, it's not the result that we wanted, but, you know, I'm proud of us. You know, we've been through a lot of ups and downs, but we stayed together. We kept fighting, and, you know. Coach Zans instilled that in, in us early, you know, just stay together, keep fighting. And, you know, that's what we did, but we came up short. Coach Jans talked about being a, a good aspect to playing in the first four was getting this stage to play on where everybody is watching you tonight, I guess. What do you have to say to people looking at Mississippi State recruits just about the culture and kind of how cool was it to have this stage all to yourself tonight? DJ, you want to answer that? Um, you, you know, it just shows that Coach knows what he's doing. You know, he, he's been here, he's been here multiple times, you know, and <coughs> He told me from the beginning that he said, just trust him. You know, we trusted him. We went out there and fought for him each and every day. You know, we sacrificed a lot during the season. So, you know, he knows what he's doing. You just got to believe in him. And, you know, if you want to go to the NCAA tournament, come to the Bulldogs. That's what I said. Tolu, your, your thoughts on, on the culture and the, the the eyes out there and watching Mississippi State basketball? <clears throat> yeah, I'm a big advocate for Coach James, man. Um, before the season, we had a meeting, we sat down, we talked, and I love everything that I was hearing. And I think all our goals align, and um, we made that, we made it happen. And everything that he said was going to happen, happened. Um, he has a blueprint, he knows what he's doing. Like DJ said, just got to trust and believe in him. And um, the culture is um, it's changing. It's changing in Mississippi State in, in a good way, so. First round. Guys like you that you know are coming back next season. I guess how much do you think this experience can can help and and kind of you know build what would you guys want to do next season? Uh, it just shows us what to expect for next year. Uh, keep believing, keep fighting, keep trusting in coach, and you know he'll he'll get us where we want to be. Just you know got to stay together. Any more questions for our student athletes? Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. A fantastic fight tonight and a terrific season. And thank you so much again for joining us. You, you, you're free to go. At this time, uh, questions for uh, Coach Chris Jans. First row. Chris, I guess, what does it mean to you to kind of hear the, the praise that, you know, your players had, you know, for, for the job you did this season and kind of the belief you were able to instill in them when you came in? I mean, what are they going to say? I'm standing right here. <laughs> I don't think they have much of a choice to spin it in a positive way. But, you know, I told them when we – made the tournament in our locker room. Congratulations, how proud I was of them. It's the last thing I told them before we took the floor is, congratulations, you're in March Madness. You're where every college basketball player yearns to be and you've got a wonderful stage to show everybody what you stand for, um, both for your front of a jersey and for your back. And certainly we're, extremely disappointed with the outcome. 
But those kids, I mean, when you outright rebound someone 49 to 28, you usually expect to win. Um, but you got to give Pitt a lot of credit. They they played ob obviously well enough to win. We just struggled in the first half to guard them. They we just couldn't contain it. You know they were eight for 13 from three, and uh, it was still a one point game. And we had eight turnovers, and they had two. And then in the second half, I think right, we got up maybe two or three was the most we ever got up. And same for them, I think, for quite a while until there with three minutes left, it was six. And then our guys went on a run and put themselves in position to win the game. And it was back and forth. But um, I'll always remember this group for their belief, for their buy-in, for their coachability. I've told them that many times throughout the year. I reiterated it in the locker room just now because it'll be my first group at Mississippi State. And we're proud of our accomplishments this year. Um, certainly we want more. We want to be playing on Friday, but it's not meant to be. First row. Coach, I know you talked about, you know, it's not about building up a program is about building a program for that year. I guess when you think back to where you started reflecting on that and to where you are now, how proud are you of your ability and this team to have done that and get to this point? It's what I told them, that maybe a few people outside of our locker room really believed that we had a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. And I said, there's probably people in this locker room that questioned it when we started talking about that when we arrived. So yeah, I mean, um, first year, you know, that was the goal that we set and we reached it this year. We'll see, you know, when we get into next year, how, how, how it'll go. But um, it's a credit to these guys. I mean, it really is. You know, coaches are gonna coach and work and plead and try to get the most out of them. But if there's no buy-in, there's no belief, then it's not gonna happen. And uh, some of it was blind faith you know, I didn't have deep-seated relationships with uh, any of these guys when they chose to come back. And then we added pieces to the puzzle. And um, we end up, you know, having, having a good good year and um, something they'll be proud of the rest of their lives. First row. Coach, a couple questions on that last shot. Were, were there other options you were kind of looking at uh, on that play there? And then to follow up on that, I mean, well, what's your message to a guy like Shaq? Obviously, you know, it's a shot that he was hoping to make, and, you know, I know what Tolu had said, but you know, what, what do you say to a guy like that uh, at late in the game situation? Yeah, there were multiple looks uh, on that play. I think maybe we have run it one time all year long, and there were a couple lob options early. And then, obviously, like Ram said, he found Shaq in the deep drift, and, I mean, there was no one around him, right, for 10, 15 feet. And um, it was a heck of a look. And fortunately, we got it off quick enough where we had at least one tap at it. I don't think the second one was probably in, in time. But at that point, it's all you can ask for. You know, a chance, the ball's in the air to, to win an NCAA tournament game and then still have enough time to get uh, put back. But um, it was a heck of a shot by Burton there, um, you know, to give them the lead. and. Uh, it was really, you know, obviously a great game for the fans. And, you know, it was a great environment. Certainly appreciate, you know, all the, the folks in the Dayton community have coming out and supporting. I know it's a basketball crazy um, community, and, and they showed up tonight, and we're appreciative of that. Another question there, first row. I know Tolu said, you know, Shaq's shot wasn't the reason you lost, but when that shot comes out of your hand, it doesn't go into the like net. It's a lot harder to feel that way yourself, I guess. How are you also helping lift Shaq up and just the rest of the team? He was the first one that entered the locker room, and all I said was that was a heck of a look. I mean, he gets it. I, I don't think he's going to wear that very long. I think anyone would be disappointed, but we all understand how that works. And... It was a heck of a look, and I was glad that he had the look. I felt really good when he rose up, and I didn't have a good angle, so I didn't have to go through the process of understanding if it was going to go in or not. Um, but he'll be fine. Another question. Coach, I know you guys have 
obviously been focused on this game, but you know, with the portal already being open and whatnot, I guess how quick does your staff kind of have to turn around at this point and start preparing for next season? No, that's already begun. It, that never ends. Recruiting never ends. Um, if you're playing or not, and you know, we'll we'll probably obviously have more time to focus on that as we go forward. Just a couple more questions here. First row. Like you said, really big stage tonight. Only game on. Everybody is watching you. What was it like to put Mississippi State basketball on the map? This being just the second tournament appearance in over a decade. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that we put them on the map, but we reintroduced ourselves to college basketball, and um, hopefully, you know, certainly we've been a, a a team that has struggled shooting the basketball all year long. It was well documented. Uh, I'm sure people that don't know us very well didn't believe it the way we started the game. Um, that was awesome, an awesome way to start. But it feels good. I mean, it feels good. I'm happy for our fan base. I know they wanted more. I certainly wanted more. Our players wanted more. But we'll have perspective here real soon, and I think we'll all be proud of, of the accomplishments that this team had and the season that we had, and um, hopefully it'll help us going forward. First row. You mentioned, I guess, the, the buy-in from this team, whether it be you know, the belief off the court or, or the play on the court. You know, how important are guys like Shaq and Cam you know, moving forward now and keeping that foundation, kind of building that culture that, that you want you know, moving forward at Mississippi State? Yeah, it's more fun in your second year because you've got guys that get it, that understand what they've went through, what lies ahead. So to be able to have players coming back, to be able to, you know, talk to the recruits when they're on campus, and then when our team eventually arrives, to be able to, to lead them, um, you know, just get them to understand from a player's perspective, you know, the expectations that we have on a daily basis and how we do things in practice, in the weight room, in the class, in the community. And, um, you know, your first year is always tough because everybody's new regardless if they played there or not. And uh, hopefully we'll have a bunch of guys back um, heading into next season. Any more questions for Coach? Thank you. Coach Chris Jans, thank you. Mississippi State wraps up the season, 21 wins. A terrific night of basketball as 75-71, uh, Southeast Missouri beating Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and then 21 lead changes and Pitt defeating Mississippi State 60-59. We'll be back tomorrow at 640, Fairley Dickinson taking on Texas Southern in the nightcap. It'll be Arizona State and Nevada.